All right, we're back in Aviary Attorney, and this and it looks like Mike's working. So let's continue. January seventh, eighteen forty-eight. The Palais du Louvre. Let's be reasonable, senors. I am sure there's simple misunderstanding. There's no misunderstanding. They are the king. Arrest that Spaniard. Wait. So... We're not defending the lion guy? Huh. I knew Falcon wouldn't feel like turning up, up to the office on Friday. But now it's midday on Monday and there's still no sign of him. This is becoming a little concerning. I should probably go find him. This home would be a good place to start. But the bird brain never gave me his address. I'll just have to find him the hard way. <laughs> He's at the concierge. How do you be at the Chateau Grenier? Excuse me, monster. I'm looking for my friend. Do I look like a lost and found to you? Buzz off, bird brain. All right then. No sign of Falcon here. Excuse me, Rupert. Oh, it's you, the, uh, first year dropout. Hey, I didn't drop out. I was forcibly ejected. That doesn't matter right now. I'm looking for Falcon. Have you seen him? Falcon? The guy who, uh, <coughs> somehow blundered his way through the Catalina trial with the help of some, uh, very dubious evidence? No, I haven't seen him since the, um, trial. Oh, well, thanks anyway. <laughs> Why would he be at the Chateau Grenier? Excuse me, Mademoiselle... Mademoiselle Duat? Uh, down here. Oh, there you are. It's Spirison, right? That's right. I hit the belt the case you were involved in. I never would have thought the Baron was a murderer. You always treat me with the utmost respect. But then, I suppose it makes sense that the most ruthless killers are the one who can put up the best facade. Yeah, I suppose so. Say, how's your friend doing? He seemed a little down last night. Oh, you've seen him? Yes, he was brooding in the corner of Le Canard Joyeux. Bumbling and drinking. It was a little depressing, to be perfectly honest. Le Canard Joyeux? That's the dingy student bar Rouge shown, right? It's not dingy, just a little rustic. In any case, that's enormous help. Thanks, mademoiselle. Anytime, Sparrowson. Alright, well, I can draw you. Sparrowson steps through the doors of Le Canard Joyeux, the dingiest student tavern in all of Paris. His nostrils fill with a pungent oh, aroma of sour wine and bitter tobacco. Wow, ruffle my feathers if it isn't little Sparrowson. I haven't seen you in years. How you doing, hun? I'm feeling pretty good, Madame Quinnell. Thanks for asking. I'm actually here to find a friend. He's a a guy named JJ Falcon. 
Falcon. Yep, that sour lump has been here all weekend. He's been really muttering to himself all weekend. Frankly, he's bringing the whole atmosphere down. I'll take care of him. Thanks, Madame Quinnell. It's no problem, hun. Huh? He's probably still in the corner of the drinking room upstairs. Alright. Hmm. No sign of him. Mon I almost stepped on the big fella. Uh, Falcon? What are you doing on the floor? Hey, Falcon, wake up! Wow, the bird is completely out cold. Let's drunk this place dry! Let's see, how do you wake a drunk person? Well, I guess it's time for a rude awakening. Wakey, wakey! <laughs> Gotta reuse the wet sprite. Ah, good, you're up. Are... Are you with us, Falcon? Yeah. Feeling sober? We should probably head back to the aviary office so we get some work done. I don't understand it, Sparrowson. Huh? I thought I did everything right. I followed the procedures. I found all the evidence. I presented the case beautifully. And yet, a guilty feline walks free while an innocent man sits in custody. What went wrong? Where's the justice? Maybe we need to try harder? Try harder? I don't know if we messed up, or if the system messed up, or what, but... We just have to do our best as lawyers, I suppose. Maybe if we worked hard enough, we could stop mess-ups from happening again. Sorry, Falcon, I don't have the answers. What I do have is freshly baked croissants from Pierre's... Here's Belangery. Croissants. Yep, they're waiting for you back at the aviary. I'm sitting here, moping about justice, and you offer me croissants. Well, it's not just croissants. I got some pains of chocolate, too. I could go for pains of chocolate. Fantastic! Well, let's make a move. Alright, I admit, these croissants are amazing. I told you, Pierre's Belangery, the Unruved, is something else. Actually, it might just be Verd. Verd. That's probably more like. Look, man. I don't know French. I'm literally just making shit up as I go along. I think Verde is Spanish, but Verde is French. Oh, that reminds me. The baker told me something interesting. Do you know what they call pains au chocolat in America? They don't call them pains au chocolat. Nope. Pronunciation difficulties. American is a whole nother language. What do they call them? Chocolate croissants. Um, uh, hello? <laughs> Chocolate croissants. Well, they... They call... Profiteros? What? Profiteros? I don't know, I'm trying. Oh, I think those are still called Profiteros. But rather than custard, they fill them with ice cream and... Mother them melted chocolate. Really? Really, America? What's wrong with custard? Simply astounding. Is this the aviary attorney? Can I speak to someone, please? Well, what do they call crepes? <laughs> Excuse me! You just hear something. Through. America does call crepes crepes. Though, if they change the ingredients, I don't know. Did you just hear something, Sparrowson? 
Down here! Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. What can I do for you, little one? Uh, oh gosh, where to start? Your name, perhaps? Mousy, my name is Mousy. Yeah, my parents weren't actually weren't mice. Okay, so my adopted parents just named me after what I am. I actually know everyone in this world is named after what they are, aren't they? Except usually last name is what they are, so it's strange to think about. Name is Bouncy. What can do? What can we do for you, Monsieur Mousy? I have this friend, and he has fallen under some legal turbulence. Legal turbulence? You mean he's been arrested? Uh, yes, I suppose so. They're saying he's a murderer, but he didn't do it. He didn't do it. That's quite a problem. I know. Oh, but I forgot to mention. He's the Prince of Spain. Prince of Spain? You didn't think that was worth mentioning from the start? I forgot, I forgot! I must ask Mousy, why did you come to us? I would have thought that the Spanish royal family would hire legal counsel with a little more. Not terribleness! Expertise. Oh, well, the prince has great faith in your law hearing skills, Monsieur Falcon. He said that your reputation as a lawyer was renowned. Really? The prince said that. This is a great opportunity, Falcon. Surely you wouldn't deny a request from the Prince of Spain? <laughs> Meh. No, let's actually... Of course, we'll take the grace. Grab your coat, Sparrowson. We have royalty to defend. That's the spirit. Good luck to you, Messieurs. You aren't coming with us, Mousy? I have, um, other... I have other matters to attend to. The Prince Juan is being held at the Conciergerie. I'm sure he'll be. F I'm sure you'll fill in all the details. Right, let's make a move then. Well then. Time to act. Go to Conciergerie for real. Good day, Monsieur. Oh, it's you two again. Hey, nice work on Lady Kitten's trial. Baron Rorguil is pacing around a cell right now, ranting about wringing your neck. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He's super mad, but hey, a criminal's a criminal, all right? The lion didn't want a death sentence. He probably shouldn't have killed a guy. Oh, you're not here to defend him, are you? Because that would be hilarious. We're actually here to see Prince Juan Ecurito, heir to the throne of Spain. The mouthy fox, huh? The guy's driving me nuts with his seniors and his flamboyant attitude. See, the sooner he hangs, the better. Well, come on then, while we're young. The Prince of Spain, I presume? Indeed, I am Juan Quirido, heir to the throne of España. And you must be the legendary lawyer, Senor J.J. Falcon. Well, I wouldn't say legendary. I wouldn't even say notable! Such humility. I would expect nothing less from renowned individuals such as yourselves. But let us get down to business. I trust my companero, Mousy, explain the situation. I told us that you've been accused of murder, but we need some further details before we can start our investigation. God, I... I hate how loud this game is. What is it you wanted to know? To be honest, Prince Juan, I'm a little confused as to how a member of royalty could get in so much trouble. Could you walk us through your activities on the day of the murder? Of course, let me see where to begin. It was the 
cold and misty morning of the 6th of January. Oh man. <laughs> See, this is... You know, America does some stupid things. But... Say January 6th instead of 6th of January is something I... Something I appreciate that they do. I had heard the King Louis Philip was unveiling a new painting at the Palais du Louvre. love Ryan, I wish to meet the man himself. So after a brief stroll and picnic to the Tuileries Garden, I entered the palace. I found the royal entourage in the Louvre's Grand Gallery. When I saw an opportunity, I presented a humble gift to the king. A rose, an international symbol of passion and virtue. How romantic! Before the king could take it, a rather rude person snatched it from my fingers. It was a royal guard. A dog by the name of Major Hal. Ouch! cried out Major Hal. I have tricked myself upon the thorns of this dastardly flower. And the major, the major slumped to the floor. His face turned blue, his mouth frothed, and he died. He died straight away after being pricked? Straight away, senor. It's obvious that the pricked finger was the cause of death, but I don't know if any poison acts so fast. No do I, senor Falcon. But clearly, the police felt that the poison upon the Ronces' thorns was the only logical explanation. And with so many witnesses, even the king himself, what could I say to defend myself? So where did this rose come from? I acquired it from a beautiful Parisian flower seller, La Salle's Market, a girl by the name of Catherine Maurice de Signe. But surely you're not suggesting the flower girl applied the poison herself, Senor Falcone? Well, I'm not making any accusations yet. I'm just planning to explore every line of inquiry. Poison Rose, but that's your evidence folder. Major Hal took a rose from Prince Juan. The thorns of the rose were supposedly covered with in poison. Yeah, I'm kind of getting the feeling I don't need to read everything. Do you want to ask something else, Senor Falcone? Why are you in Paris? Why did you come to Paris, Prince Juan? I was on a diplomatic mission. I do not know whether you are familiar with current events, but you may have heard that my country is in a state of turmoil. Contenders for the Spanish throne are slandering, plotting, backstabbing, it's chaos, and the people are suffering. So I thought, if I could be friends of French royalty, perhaps even the king himself, maybe I could strengthen my family's name. With the Clarida dynasty restored, I would have a chance of bringing peace to my beautiful nation. Well, I guess that plan's gone out the window. Sparrow said, don't be rude. No, he was right. I felt terribly. Don't fret, Prince Juan. We'll do everything in our power to clear your name. May once the dust has settled, you'll have another opportunity to speak with King Louis. He fell and complete your mission. Thank you, Senor Falcon. I am sure you will do your best. Is there anything else you want to ask? What were you reading before we so rudely interrupted? Ah, uh, this book, the Spanish classic. Don Quixote of La Mancha. Do you know it? I've heard of it. About the knight who jousts windmills, right? That's one part of the story, yes. He was a virtuous but elderly knight by the name of Don Quixote. In the chapter you mentioned, he takes up arms against an army of giants who are terrorizing a town. Quixote's partner Sancho warns them that the giants are just windmills. Their flailing arms are just sails swirling in the wind. The Quixote doesn't listen, takes up his lance, gets on his horse, and charges anyway. Sounds more like dumb, Quixote, am I right, Falcon? Perhaps he is dumb, Senor Sparrowson. 
Many of us spend our whole lives jousting imaginary giants. Speak for yourself, Juan. I've never been jousting, let alone seeing a giant. I think we're getting off track here. Indeed, I tell you what, send you a falcon. I'll lend you my copy of this book. Maybe you will have time to give it a read at some point. Maybe I will. Thank you. Okay. Don what? It's not even quick sewed here. Was there anything else you wanted to know? No, I think that's everything. Thank you. What's the plan, Big Bird? Well, we have two lines of inquiry. Hurry. We should head to the Sea of the Crime, the Palais du Lovre, and see if we can find any clues or witnesses. We should interview the Flower Girl in Les Halls Market to see if she has anything to say about this alleged poisoned rose. Two tasks, Brito. Over for six days? This almost sounds too easy. Let's not get complacent. Good luck, senores. Wait a minute, Falcone. What is it? Did something seem off about Prince Juan to you? Um. Uh Page forty four seems to be missing. What's on page forty four? I don't know the book. Plus different printings of the book could ha it have had different sizes which would give it different uh, number which would give it different page numbers so it's not like I could just easily look this up uh, give me a moment okay so I had two pings on discord and turns out they're both at everyone joy wasn't actually something to worry about. Alright. Oh, looks like we keep the characters from previous cases as well. Flamboyant Prince of Spain. A trial for the murder of Major Hal and the conspiracy to kill you know, conspiracy to kill the king. Hmm. Oh wow. We received 40 francs from Caterline. As for something seeming off, I mean, I feel like a lot of like Mihiri on Spain I've seen in has shows people being shows men being open chested, so that's. Him being open chested might not act might not be off, but he's royalty. Yeah, no, why? Is that a normal thing in Spain? Is that something the media does? Maybe is that just something for like the peasants? I don't know. I just picked on too. It's like the fox was hiding something. Sounds like we're on the same page. Well, look. If it's bothering you, then we could always ask around. At least someone in the city knows Juan's dirty secret. If he actually has anything to hide, that is. 
<laughs> yeah, let's dig up the dirt! I still got a trial to prepare for. Priority Sparrowson. So I guess that's just gonna be a common thing in this game. It's like... Like... Do you suspect the defendant? Or do you suspect your client? Falcone and Sparrowson make their way to the to the place to Ketersel, the courtyard just north and north of the Love Rays Grand Gallery. That's the Arc de Triomphe over there, right? I swear it's smaller than how I remember it. That's the Arc de Triomphe du Ketersel, you doofus. The big Arc de Triomphe is up the road. What? No way! Why are there two? Because when a man like Napoleon invades half of Europe, he gets to build as many triumphal arches as he damn well pleases. Well, 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 I never expected to see you here, JJ! That arrogant voice. Ah, <sighs> good day, Severin. Let's be civil, JJ. Why don't you introduce me to your new assistant? Wait. Is this not the, like, one-eyed investigator? It isn't! Shit. Ah. Uh... Why don't you introduce me to your new assistant? Five, five, seven. This is Sparrowson, my assistant. Sparrowson, this is Severin Cocorico, the most pompous prosecutor in Paris. Oh, you two are old school friends or something? More like arch rivals. Please, JJ, I think our... I think our rival implies some sort of competition. As I recall, we've met in court on five occasions. And on five occasions, did you get humiliated terribly? I'm amazed a failing bird brain like you is still able to get clients. Actually, Severin, business has never been better. I'll have you know that I'm currently being employed by the Prince of Spain, no less. The Prince of Spain? Juan Carito? Well, well... This is quite a amusing coincidence. Don't tell me. Correct, I am the prosecutor for the very same case. It is a pity the Spanish prince will indubitably hang, but I suppose that is what he gets for hiring a bird brain to represent him. Don't call me bird brain. You're the only bird brain here, Severin. Tch. One always speak badly when one has nothing to say. Voltaire. Uh-oh, he's giving you the verbal smackdown! Quick, Falcon, make a witty retort! Huh? Oh, yeah, uh... <laughs> I'm rubbering your glue? I don't agree with your right to wait. I agree with what you say, but... Oh dear! Tch. You're the same bumbling fool that you've always been, Falcone. But enough talk. If you measures would excuse me, I have a case to prepare for. JJ Sparrowson, I'll see you two in court. Ugh, I can't stand that guy. He did seem like a bit of a cockerel. But is it true what he said? You know, that he trounced you in court five times? I can't deny it. Severin has a reputation as a ruthlessly thorough prosecutor. 
mountains of evidence, surprise witnesses. It's no wonder he always manages to one-up me. But this time it'll be different, right? I hope so. I know so, for you see... I stole this annotated map of the love ray. He out of Kokoriko's pocket when he was busily rattling off off all tear quotes. Sparrowson, that's 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 pretty impressive actually. I swear you were standing three meters away the whole time. You tall birds are so busy with your head in the clouds that you don't ever notice a smoke running around your feet. Pinching Kokoriko's pocket was like taking candy from a very tall baby. Let's take a closer look. I see. This map shows the entire Lovre area. Everything from Tuleris to the Rue de Lovre. Most convenient. We're currently standing here in the place de, place du Carousel. And those pendant arrows seem to show the route taken by the king's entourage, which means that the first that the king first went here through the Salle du Tibre, and then here to the Grand Gallery where the murder occurred. Did Prince Swan say he spent the morning in the the two Larry's gardens? That's right. So that means Prince Juan approached the Lovre from the west side, somewhere over here. Sounds like we have a lot of places to visit. Where should we go? 